Derek, it's great to see you again. Welcome. Thank you. So just clear, because earlier it sounded like maybe you were thinking China's turning a quarter uh, here economically. Do you think that? I mean, I saw that the stocks uh, were up like 9% last week. Uh, I think that there are signs of a possible improvement. I would not say it's turning a corner. The trend for the economy is worse um, in terms of, you know, July looking worse than previous months. Uh, the signs of possible improvement for me are not stimulus. They're not more borrowing, more construction spending, things like that. They're the signals the government has been giving the private sector that it might let the private sector do more of what it wants to do. Now, those signals don't necessarily mean anything. It could be a fake out. It could be the government again saying, well, we still want you to do what we tell you to do, in which case they will amount to nothing. But that's the hope. The way the economy turns is that the government stops stamping on its own private sector. Although that it seems unlikely, doesn't it? I mean, maybe as a final act of desperation, but does anything say to you that that's a, a path they would really go? Or what would be the signs, let's put it this way, that they're going that route but calling it something else, <laughs> maybe to make it more palatable or what have you? Well, I mean, there, you know, as you mentioned, there, there's just a, a whole raft of measures. And, and usually with China, when they announce 15 measures, it, it means they don't have one that they think will work. But one of the things they've announced buried in there is asking the private sector, especially in technology, to give them case studies of how the private sector has helped the economy and helped society. And, you know, that's a first. They haven't done that recently. Hmm. And if they're convinced by that, they're not bound by it or anything, but if they're convinced by that, they might say, oh, you know, we didn't know that. Why don't you guys do more of this? Now, again, I'm not, I, I'm not guaranteeing this by any means, but it is a, a new development in, say, the last five years. Sure. And again, when we're looking at kind of those gradual signs of a turn and, and that kind of thing. So do you think stocks are right to be a little bit more excited here? Well, I don't. I, I mean, on the ch Chinese side, I, I just don't believe the Chinese stock market is ever right about anything. <laughs> um, its peak was in 2007. Wow. So people talking about you know the great rise of China that that's not the way the stock market see the Chinese stock market sees things. You know, it's dominated by by companies that don't honestly report earnings and so on. When you're talking about overseas stocks betting on China, it's really a matter of expectations. We had a lot of people calling for a China boom this year. That has clearly not happened. Now we have the economy weakening. They seem to be betting on a government response. Now, I think there's a chance of a government response. So if you think stocks are, are really beaten down or China exposed stocks are really beaten down, then I think it's a good bet. But I mean, nobody should be thinking, oh, yeah, the economy is going to turn for sure. Right. So that being the case, um, you have to wonder about the global impact. You know, when we, when we debate recession odds here and we say, you know, well, if it were 2007 and China was entering the global market, I could be a lot more excited about the upside than in 2023, where we're just trying to figure out if they're going through Japanification. Right. The, the, there is a long-term problem here that only reform can address. So if you think there's major stimulus, meaning borrowing coming, um, that can help you for, for a period of time. And then it ends. And now you're stuck with, well, what do we do now? That would be a very short-term bet on stocks or, or, or other sorts of assets. If you want a long-term bet on China, it has to come through reform. So the only thing that matters is the kind of you know, releasing the hold on private sector signaling and steps that, that we've discussed. Right. So, you know, we kind of spin this forward three months, six months. We're still looking for maybe a big bang effect. Do you think we're ever going to get it? I mean, would there come a point of desperation in which the leadership says, OK, you know, we, we kind of see the numbers and where they're pointing and we have to pull out, you know, the bigger bazooka here? Well, I mean, I don't I don't want to contradict myself because I think there's a chance that they will turn to reform. But I don't think the chance is 50 percent. Hmm. I think it's considerably lower than that. And I don't you know, there are other sorts of tools to me aren't going to work. Uh, you mentioned in the opening construction spending. Young people don't even want those jobs. Right. Um, they've already overbuilt a lot of their infrastructure. Another monetary stimulus. They're heavily in debt. The last monetary stimulus didn't work. So I don't think there's anything coming to the rescue in terms of traditional Chinese stimulus. And, you know, I think the Chinese government has shown a lot of tolerance of what we consider to be a weak economy. They don't seem to be too worried. So that's another thing. Their motivation isn't that high. Totally. I think they'll allow the private sector some steps, but probably not too many. They'll, it'll still be a state-controlled economy, and they'll be fine with what we think is a weak performance. Yeah, and maybe uh, investors be warned if I, if I could rephrase it as such. Derek, it's great to have you today. Thanks so much.